Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to install NetBeans under Linux and do a sample uh, C++ project. So the first thing to do is to download NetBeans. So if you go to, let me go back here, if inside of Linux you launch a uh, web browser, of which, uh, for example, Firefox is installed by default under Ubuntu, um, go to netbeans.org. Once there, on the right-hand side, you'll be able to download the latest NetBeans, so in my case it's 8.0.2. So go to download. It will have automatically detected what my OS is based on the browser information. You can say what other ones you want to download, but at the moment I want the Linux, uh, I want 64-bit, but that's fine, it'll do both. And you can pick which version of NetBeans you wish to download. So if you're doing just Java development, you can pick Java SE, Java Enterprise Edition. We're going to be doing C++, so I'm going to select download this. And then the download will start. I can say I want to save the file, and it'll automatically save it. Now, I've already done this to save a bit of time, and so here's the file that it would have been downloaded. Now, it's not like a standard executable. We just double-click on it, an installer under Windows. To install this, you have to do a few funky things. So I'm going to launch a terminal. So I did Control-Alt-T there to launch a terminal. I could have also gone here to the Ubuntu menu and typed in terminal, and then selected the terminal. It'll launch a new command line for me. So I can do PWD to figure out where I currently am. I'm currently in the slash home slash uh, Brian folder, ls to list the folders, and this shows me everything in the current directory. Here I can switch, I want to switch into the downloads folder, so I'm going to switch, type down, I could type the whole thing out, but I'm going to type part of it and hit tab, it'll autocomplete, and I can now see this file that I had. In order for me to actually run this file though, I need to tell Linux that it's an executable file. If I do ls dash L for long, it's going to show me all of the information about it. And if you're familiar with Linux, you'll see, well, there's no X's in here. Well, this says I can read and write for uh, the user, the group, and so forth. It can only read. I wish to change it so I can execute the file. So I'm going to do chmod, so change the mod, uh, the, the, um, the permissions, plus X for execute, and then I type in the file name. So I can type net, and I can type the whole thing out, but I just type part of it, hit tab, it auto-completes to the rest hit enter, I'm going to do ls-l again, and now we can see that I've got a couple x's in here, three of them in fact, so that means that I can execute this file, which means I could run it, and the color has actually changed for me, uh, showing that it's an executable file. So I can run it, I, I can't just type the file name, I have to type dot slash first, it's, sort of, it's a safety measure in Linux, that the current folder is not in the path, so dot slash, make sure you get the right slash, if you use the wrong slash, you're under Windows, not Linux. Uh, and it's not going to do what you want. And I type the first bit of it, hit tab, and I'm going to run this executable. Uh, so here it tells me that it could not find the JDK. Uh, so searching for the uh, JVM on the system, I was unable to find it. Uh, you can specify the location of this, or you can go and download it. Um, a simple way to do this would be to use sudo apt-get. So sudo apt get install, and I'm going to say, I think it's default uh, JDK. Get the right password here. And it's going to say it's going to take 100 megs to install that. So I'm going to hit enter, and it should then start to download all of this. So as it's doing this, um, up here it saw the list of all the different packages that are going to be installed. What it's doing with the um, uh, sudo apt-get, the apt-get program is reading information about the different packages that are available uh, to be installed under my distribution, and each of those packages maintains information about the dependencies. So it depends on different other packages, so for example it's going to depend on the x11 uh, Proto Core Dev package. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that is. X11 is the Windows environment, so this is the uh, core part of it, the development portion. So that needs to be installed in order for the um, the JDK, which is the Java uh, development kit, to uh, exist on the computer. Now you could be asking, why do I need anything Java when I'm trying to build with C++? Well, NetBeans itself requires Java to be installed. So hence, that's why I've got the requirement to install the JDK first. 
So this is going to take a few more minutes to, to pull down. Um, other things I'm going to want to be able to do, well, uh, once I have NetBeans up and running, if I'm inside of a virtual machine, which in fact this is running in a virtual machine, I can show you the rest of the window here, um, I'm going to want to ensure that I know how to copy files to and from my virtual machine. Um, so if I'm downloading them from an email, for example, in my uh, native OS, my host OS, I can copy them into and out of um, my virtual machine. If I wanted to print things, I could use that through the uh, the host OS. So that's some other um, features you may want to be interested in. Let me scale this out. We can see what's going on. Okay, so it's almost done installing. It's just now going through and actually, so it's finished downloading rather, and it's unpacking each of the different packages it's going to install for me. I should also say there are ways to do this in a graphical sort of way. There's a um, install manager and so forth. Um, but generally under Linux, at least under Ubuntu, the standard way is to use apt-get. Uh, it's sort of what most of the help guides will do. It's a faster, more concise way of saying what's going on. So let me go back here and now try to reinstall uh, NetBeans. It's now found the JVM. And here we go. OK, so we'll say we want to install this. I accept the terms, having read carefully, of course. And you can select where you want to install it. It's going to install it under my home directory uh, by default. Um, so here is, it's not going to be available to all users, but that's probably fine if it's my personal machine. And it knows it has permission to uh, access this location, so that's fine. I'll say go ahead and check for updates as required throughout its life. And now it's going to go through and copy all the information from the downloaded install package and put it into my the home directory install location. If you already happen to have a version of NetBeans installed, you could have uninstalled it first by using um, apt-get. So I'll show you what the command would have been if you wanted to get rid of a version of NetBeans. So sudo apt-get remove NetBeans will likely get rid of an installed version if you have one already. Um, now, a word on this is sudo, which runs as the super user, so it's the over super user do the following. That's only available if you've got root permission. So on your machine or on your virtual machine, no problem. If you're running this in a managed environment, such as a uh, course lab or something, um, you probably don't have sudo access, and in fact trying to run sudo may generate some red flags for your IT department. So only do this on your own machine. Um, if you don't have, if it's running in a managed environment and NetBeans is not present, but you need it, uh, you probably have to talk to the IT people to get it installed. Okay, so coming back here to the installer, we can see that it's still chugging through, uh, working its way through, um, trying to get everything installed. Okay, so we're now back up and got it all finished installing. I'm now going to just let it run. So I'm going to let it do the uh, anonymous data upgrade update. That's fine. They can learn what features I do and do not use in the tool. So let me now show this here. So the way to run NetBeans is it's probably, let me check if it's here in the Ubuntu logo. So I can type NetBeans. And here is 8. So I could run it through there, or it's also got a desktop icon, so I'm going to run it from here. You might also want to drag it onto the bar on the left if you use it. So here's NetBeans. First thing I'm going to want to do is create a new project. So I'm going to click on this new project, or I could go to File, New Project. I now select what type of project I want. We've only installed uh, the C, C++ support, so here it is. If you're running on a, if you try to use this in another environment, 
They may have installed one of the other packages I showed her initially, so the other versions of NetBeans. If you don't see C++ listed here, that means that they have not installed the C++ version or the C++ add-ons, and you can ask uh, your administrator to install those. But since we installed it ourselves, we've got it here, I can select the different type of project I want. If I was, say, downloading some sample code from somewhere that had a make file with it already, I'd use this existing source, project with existing source, but for us, we're just going to use the C, C++ application. So click Next, give it a name, I'm going to call this one uh, Demo App 1. I tell it where I want to put it, the project location, um, you can pick whatever you like. If it's part of a course, you put the course name here, so this is part CMPT, maybe 130. And so it tells you where it's actually going to end up. It's a good idea to put it in a folder like this so that you can kind of keep organized by all your different projects. I'm going to create a main, let it create a main file for me, a default one, and I can choose here between a C or C++ main file. Um, in some cases, you may also want to select the different build tools. Uh, the default is probably good if you're going to run it on the uh, machine you're building it on. So I click Finish. It'll create my project for me. I've got a bunch of folders here that I can sort of, my files will automatically go into. The source files is probably the most interesting for the moment. Double click on that, we get the main. And if I just wanted to run this, I could hit or go to run, run project, which is, it tells me F6, and run the project. We'll see it actually go through the build process. Uh, oh, it doesn't have a C++ compiler. Interesting. Uh, I'm not sure why I didn't detect one. Um, let's make sure that we actually have one. So I'm going to come into here, and I'm going to type G++. Oh, not installed. So, sudo app get install G++. Yes. So, learning as we go. So this is going to be installed now. I'm going to guess, I'm going to speculate here. Uh, it's going to give me, yeah, so I'm going to speculate here that this is going to be under user bin g++ when it's done. So I type g++, says no input errors, yep, and then where is g++, and it's under user bin g++. There we go, so click OK. And so now it builds correctly and it runs, didn't do anything for me because I'm not asking it to do anything. So I'm already in uh, C standard lib. I'm going to hash include. I could do uh, IO stream, but I'm actually going to do C STD IO, C standard IO, and this gives me printf. So, hello world, using a printf. Slash n. Put in the line, and F6, it builds, says hello world, the printf, and I can do C out. Hello world, if you're using C out. And line. Now I haven't yet included include IO stream top. And again I'm gonna hit F6 and it builds and runs. If I put in a syntax error, hit F6, it says build failed. If I scroll up to the output of my make file, it's gonna tell me all the things that went wrong. And so here, if I click on it, it'll take me to the line and tells me error, expecting a semicolon before C out. So you might be tempted to put a semicolon here. And that's going to work. That's totally not what you want your code to look like. So it needed to come before this. Well, basically, it comes at the end of the previous statement. So I'm going to put it at the end of the previous statement. That's the way it goes. OK, so that's uh, all I wanted to show on the quick demo on how to install NetBeans on a fresh install of Linux.